This video is um, a response to one of the one of the comments I got from one of the YouTubers out there, um, and it's over contractions. Now I briefly covered this in other videos. I don't know which one specifically, so there's a lot of them. You'll have to do some digging, do some researching, whatever, right? But yeah, this is just going to be like a response, I guess. And for some of you, it's a review, right? So let's get to it. Um, in Cebuano, there are certain particles that contract and that we can contract them because of natural flowing speech and how people uh, articulate their speech. So some of these are examples of contracted particles. The ang, og, and, and the nga, right? Ang, og, and nga. Um, and you'll see why. Um, when we're going to use ang, it has to be the e form of ang, right? And most often of times, if you're going to contract particles with a word, it has to end in a vowel, right? The word is going to have to end in a vowel. <clears throat> That's important. For nga, however, nga can end in a vowel or an n because you're just going to add the ng ending, the ng ending, right? So it can you can put the ng ending after the n, right? Or after a vowel. And that's for just for nga. So here are some example words. Um, it's not an exhaustive list, but it's just a, a list of common words that you can use for contractions. And I put the ellipsis to indicate that there are more than just these words, right? Ako, ko, pa, and smao, and so on, right? Wala, duna, aduna, naa, anaa, nimo, unsa, whatever. The list just goes on and on. But this isn't a complete exhaustive list. When you continue your journey in learning more about the language, you'll find out other words that you can contract. And that's just for your own time. Here, I put an example of how to contract words. So, for example, ako plus nga, you, be, you get akong, right? Akong. And you can also say akong nga, which makes sense too. You know, you can say akong nga, or you can also say akong Ang akong lapis. Ang akong nga lapis. Yeah, ang akong nga lapis. But it's more, it's more um, commonly heard as akong lapis. Ang akong lapis instead of ang akong nga lapis. Though this is acceptable as well. It's just that people speak faster. They use this one. This is more commonly heard. And you're probably going to hear this 99% of the time. Ka and og, right? Ka, ug, og, kag, right? Kag. Um you'll probably see this one often too, ka and og. Um, why? Because ka is is a shortened, uh, shortened form of the absolutive case or absolutive pronoun for the second person singular, ikao, right? Ikao is, in, is the uh, second, second person singular absolutive case pronoun, ikao, but we can shorten it to ka. Um, and you probably will not find, um, or you'll probably find this combination, sorry, you'll probably find this combination gag more frequently because we have, what, an absolutive case mark, uh, an absolutive case, uh, whatchamacallit, word, I guess, a pronoun, right? And a non-absolutive case pronoun, which can make sense, yeah, which, yeah, it's like a, a focus, there you go, a non, a, a, an absolutive case Right, and then a, a side focus or an object kind of focus, and you get kag. Pa and ang, you get pai, right? Pa and ang gets pai. Now remember, we we can't take ang; we have to take e if you're gonna contract it. Otherwise, ki, uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna make sense. Uh, pila and ang again. Ang is gonna be that e whenever you contract. It's gonna make that e pilai. Mao and ang, maoi, right? Maoi. Uh, do, do, do. And the last one here, I wrote an example with the ang just because to me this one is something that you will see frequently. Um, I didn't write the other examples just because I feel like they are, I feel that they are self explanatory, but this one I wanted to show you, right? The sentence that we have, the parent sentence, is na apako ang duha, which means I still have two. Like two, whatever. I still have two. 
So naapa ko ang duha. Now, I put ang here and I circled it because even though you say naapa ko ang duha, it doesn't have a good conversational flow. Yet we will understand what you're trying to say. It just doesn't have a good conversational flow. Um, I'm not sure if it's a good grammatical flow or not, but we still have um, meaning and we'll, we'll know what you mean, right? However, the following three sentences after that are very much acceptable ways to say ko ang duha. And notice how you have to um, change ang again to the, to the e, right? Naay pako duha. Naap. Uh, na ay pako duha, na apay ko duha, or na apakoy duha. Notice how that e can attach to any one of those, right? Na ay pai and koy duha. As long as that e is there, it's going to indicate that ang or that that's an absolutive focus. Like there's an there exists an absolutive focus marker somewhere, right? And in this case, we are talking about the duha, the the two two of what we have two of what. Right? And since we remain in the absolutive focus, right, we have to use the absolutive, uh, absolutive case pronoun, ko, which is the short form for ako. Um, anything else in here? I'm not sure what else to, to talk about in this video, but yeah, um, definitely the comment said something like kog and kai, uh, kog and koi, meaning something similar like that, which they they can mean something similar, but they mark different. Um, they mark different uh, focuses. So kog obviously uses the og, and koi uses the ang, right? Those mark different uh, cases or case markings. There you go. They have different case markings for your focus, all right? So hopefully this clarified some things.